Welcome to the Keeping a Simple Series for Biostatistics. Uh, this is a series that gives students a lot of trouble, but it's easy points on the exam, so hopefully you'll learn it the right way this time. I don't have any issues with it. Let's start off by talking about definitions with types of studies. First thing we're going to talk about is a clinical trial. What's a clinical trial? Well, it's an experiment that contains two equal groups where you take one variable and change it in one group and compare it to the other group. Okay? So you take two groups, equal groups, change one variable in one group, and see what the results are. Now, what you're going to do here, you're going to use what we call double blinding. What's double blinding? That means both the doctors and the patients don't know who gets the real drug or who gets the placebo. Okay? So this way you keep it double blind, so your results are going to be unbiased. Now, you use similar study subjects to improve data validity and decrease bias. What does that mean? That means that you're going to try to find subjects that are going to be as similar as possible, both in, so like, same age, same gender, same race, height, weight, right? This way you're comparing similar groups of people in this clinical trial. Now, you can have ethical concerns with this, right? Like, what happens if you, uh, would it be ethical, let's say, to have a clinical trial to study a new drug that treats hypertension? Right? And you have people that have hypertension, but instead of giving them real blood pressure medication, they're getting the placebo. See that? So you're not treating them, right? So you can run into ethical concerns with clinical trials. Four phases to a clinical trial. Toxicity, efficacy, comparison, post-marketing surveillance. Well, what's toxicity? Let's say we're trying an insulin drug, okay? That means that toxicity would be, does this new insulin drug have bad side effects? Phase one. Phase two, efficacy. Does this new insulin drug work the way it's supposed to? Comparison, phase three. Does this new insulin drug work better than the old ones that are already available? Phase four, post-marketing surveillance. What is that? Now that the drug has been out, it's on the market for five years, are we seeing any unseen or strange side effects? Like it causes a heart attack, causes ball cancer, whatever. All right? Post-marketing surveillance. Go back in time and see what happens. Let's talk about sensitivity. What is sensitivity? This is the ability of a test to detect the disease when it's truly present. It's the ability of a test to say, hey, you have this disease when you actually have the disease. Example, in screening for HIV, we do ELISA as our sensitive test to detect as many positives as possible. It's okay if we get some false positives, we can go back later and do a specific one to test. But we want to get everybody that might have this disease. We want to, it's like an umbrella. We want to get everybody that has it and we can narrow it down later. Okay, so this is going to be our bigger group. How are you going to solve this? It's going to be true positive, over true positive plus false negative. It's true positive over true positive plus false negative. So that's A over A plus C. A over A plus C. A over? A plus C. A over? A plus C. A over? A plus C. Excellent. The sensitivity is the ability of a test to detect the disease when it's truly present. A over A plus C, which is true positive over true positive plus false negative. It's a ninja analogy. Okay, it's a ninja right now taking a sword. It's going down. Okay, so going down from A to C, A over A plus C. Sensitivity is used to rule things out, okay, so snout, S-N, sensitivity, out, snout. Sensitivity rules things out. Epidemic versus endemic versus pandemic. Epidemic, the observed incidence is way bigger than the expected incidence. Widespread or rampant outbreak of the disease, that's an epidemic. Like the movie Outbreak, really bad virus killing everyone in the United States. That's an epidemic. Endemic. That's a disease that is typically present with a particular group of people. So endemic, a disease that is typically present with a particular group of people. So kuru is a prion disease that only cannibals get from eating dead people's brains on like this remote island. Okay, that's endemic. Pandemic, an epidemic that is even more widespread, but now throughout the world. That's a pandemic, like the movie Outbreak, but the virus is killing everyone in the entire world instead of just the United States. P-value versus Q-value, P-value. Less than 0.05 for a set of data, there is less than a 5% chance that the data was obtained by chance. If the p-value is less than 0.05, that means that there's a less than 5% chance the data was obtained by chance. P-value less than 0.5 is generally used as the cutoff for saying that the results of a study are statistically significant. So, know this. A study with a p-value of less than 0.05 may still have serious flaws. A low p-value does not imply causation, a study may have statistical significance, but may not be clinically significant. So there's a difference there. It may be statistically significant, but not clinically significant. Okay, so Q equals 1 minus P. So let's talk about an example. If I tell you we've done a study on new blood pressure lowering medication that can lower the blood pressure from 130 over 80 to 129 over 80 with a P value which is uh, less than 0 0.0001. 
So it's lowering uh, blood pressure from 130 over, one, over, over 80 to 129 over 80 with a p-value of less than 0 0.0001. You will still not use the new drug since the result is not important enough. The small amount of change it creates and not to mention the cost of possible side effects, right? So it's not clinically significant for you in this case. 